the undefeated, red-hot, 4-0, 1-0 in Big Ten Conference play, Rutgers Scarlet Knights, take the road this Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Central Time. You already know where we're heading, and that is to Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, where the Cornhuskers will be facing off against this, again, red-hot Scarlet Knights squadron led by Greg Schiano, who's just coming off of a Friday night win over Washington. The last time Nebraska was at home was also a Friday night game, a loss to Illinois, but to be fair, Illinois is a much better team than Washington. Both of these programs are looking to take steps forward, looking to absolve themselves of their losing ways. They have done very poorly in the Big Ten. Really, since they've joined, that's at least been the case for Rutgers. Nebraska, of course, did okay under Bo Pelini, fell off during the Mike Riley era. Scott Frost couldn't get him going, and... Matt Rule right now is rubbing the defibrillator pads together and is trying to jumpstart this Nebraska program. And I think he's doing that. But what Greg Schiano has done at Rutgers, beating Virginia Tech on the road, finding a way to beat Washington despite them outgaining the Scarlet Knights by 200 yards, it's impressive stuff. These are both good coaches. These are teams that I think have a chip on their shoulder who want to take steps forward. And we're going to talk about that today and what is, I think, one of the more underrated and critical matchups, not just for this season in the Big Ten and, of course, this week, but I think for the long term as well. Nebraska right now is favored by six and a half, seven points, lined open up at six and a half. And the last time these two schools met, Nebraska won 14 to 13 in a 2022 game where Rutgers led 13 nothing at the half. And then mainly thanks to Trey Palmer legend at Nebraska, now NFL player for the Buccaneers. Well, Nebraska came back and won. But before we dive into today's preview and prediction for this Saturday's Rutgers versus Nebraska matchup, I want you, yes you, to like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell so that you can get notified when we release more college football content here on College Football with Sam. Share this video around so that you, well, can have more friends in this space and so that we can gain more followers, more viewers, and just grow this awesome community. We pride ourselves on being the best Big Ten football community here on YouTube. And one day, we want to be the best college football community in general. Comment your prediction, your preview, your analysis down in the comment section below. And again, like the video, subscribe, share, hit the bell, check out the Discord server that we have that we released a few weeks ago. We have a dedicated Nebraska and Rutgers thread in there for conversation. Dedicated thread for all 18 Big Ten teams. You won't want to miss it. So do all of those things. Thank you very much. Let's dive right in. These two teams are relatively similar. Nebraska has been a more dominant team, I'm not going to lie, since the first game of Rutgers season, their kickoff, they have been a little bit back and forth here and there. At the end of the day, they do game control their opponents and do a pretty good job of staying ahead of them. But against Howard, for example, they led 17-7 at the half. Against Akron, they led 21-3 at the half, similar to Ohio State against Akron, having some struggles in that game. Against Virginia Tech, Rutgers nearly choked that game away. They led 16-7 at the half at one point. It was a 23-7 game. Virginia Tech outscored Rutgers 16-3 in the fourth, but Rutgers held on to win thanks to a Jai Patel 24-yard field goal. And then, of course, against Washington, Rutgers led the whole way. They actually led 14-3 at the half, and then Washington outscored them 15-7 the rest of the way and outgained them 521 total yards to 299. There were no turnovers. Washington had eight more first downs. The difference in that game was Washington missed three field goals and failed on fourth down twice. And we're only two of 12 on third down overall. So when Washington wasn't successfully running the ball on Rutgers, Rutgers did a pretty good job of shutting them down. Will Rogers really only came alive later in the game. Early on, they were doing a pretty good job of limiting him. 
And I just wanted to spend some time on that because I don't think a lot of people have paid close attention to Rutgers or have watched them to the same degree that, let's say, people have for Nebraska, because Nebraska has been a hot name since the preseason. Rutgers is a team that I predicted to go 10-2 and in the preseason, and I have been keeping, I would say, a close eye on them. But they're not ranked yet. They're thankfully receiving votes. If they beat Nebraska this weekend, they'll probably be ranked. Um, but only time will tell there. They're rated 5.4 points better than the average college football team in FPI, Rutgers is. Part of that is the fact that they have not been able to really put together a full four quarters of efficient football yet. Yes, they're 4-0. They find ways to win. I think they're well coached, but they do have some issues that we'll get into later. According to S&P Plus, they're only viewed as 7.3 points better than the average college football team. Nebraska, on the other hand, by FPI, is 8.1 points better than the average college football team. And S&P Plus, they're about 11.5 points better than the average college football team. You add on to that the three-point home field advantage that is universally accepted by everyone. I think for some stadiums like Ohio Stadium, Michigan Stadium, Beaver Stadium, uh, Death Valley in LSU, Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa for Alabama, Sanford Stadium at Georgia. Like those stadiums should be five, six, seven points of home field advantage because of how loud they are and intimidating. But overall, three points is still, I'd say, a pretty accurate gauge in college football, especially for smaller stadiums like, let's say, SHI Stadium for Rutgers. Nebraska is probably a little higher than three, but let's just... For sake of argument, put it at three. You see that Nebraska is about eight points better than Rutgers and FPI, about four points better in S&P Plus. Well, there you get six, seven home favorites, Nebraska being favored by anywhere from six to seven points per these power rating systems. And that checks out with the Vegas spread, which right now is six and a half per ESPN bet. And you go further into looking from a bird's eye view, looking at the forest, and then we get into the trees. That's what we like to do here on College Football with Sam. Start broad, get more detailed, typically like to save the best for last. Rutgers is a 0.150 points per play margin. That means per every, per every play that Rutgers runs... Compared to every play that their opponents run, on an average basis, they score 0.15 more points per play that they run compared to the plays that their opponent runs. For Nebraska, they have a 0.192 points per play margin. Same process there. Nebraska was pretty high three games in, and then in the Illinois game, they got bogged down a little bit. And then against Purdue, where... This is jaw-dropping, in truth, and I said in a community post of mine that I think Ed Foley should be fired at the end of the year. The special teams are—they are Scott Frost-level bad at Nebraska right now. That has clearly not been fixed. 0 of 3 on field goals. And Bushini pinned 2 inside the 20. I imagine—I don't remember exactly, so pardon me— I imagine some of those punts were from middle of the field, so that's why he didn't average more than 40 yards. He averaged 34.3 yards per punt. Um, Nebraska on the season with Bushini has been averaging, wow, 46.5 yards per punt. 50 against Illinois, 50 against Colorado, 48 against UTEP. They haven't punted all that much this season, um, but in that game, special teams overall was bad. They ran 59 plays to produce 56, so there wasn't that big of a disparity there, but it was 0-0 at the half. Nebraska looked rough right up until really end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth. They had a lot of positive things that went on in between the 20s, but they couldn't finish, they couldn't score up until that third, fourth quarter. So I think that shows, even with the fact that outside of Illinois, they're so lost, they have won by double digits, why they're not very high in points per play margin. You look at strength of schedule. Both teams have had strength of schedules that are outside of the top 100 for now. They'll jump inside the top 100 after this game. Rutgers is 10th in game control. That kind of shocked me, but I think it's because they win the turnover battle. They're always one step ahead of their opponents, and they're just, look, 
they they are efficient with what they have. Yes, they have some issues, and we'll we'll get to that. But relative to talent, and with how much they've brought back, the fact that they didn't use the portal that much, similar with Nebraska, they just used it to supplement some positions. They have done a pretty good job. They're not a team that wows you, but they're doing more than what's been expected of them, like Kaliak Manis being a competent passer. The offensive line looks like one of the best in the nation. Uh, the defense in passing is pretty good. Rushing, well, we'll get into that. They're, they have some issues there. As for Nebraska, well, they've lost a game, so that hurts their game control. And it always hurts your ability to control games when against Purdue, one of the worst teams of the Power Four, you're tied 0-0 at the half. That is not exactly confidence-inducing. But they still control their games. They've been honestly full, taking in the full scope of dominant in four out of their five games. The only game where they weren't dominant in was the Illinois game. And both teams have played comparable schedules. Rutgers is less talented than Nebraska. I would say currently Rutgers is more efficient than Nebraska. They kind of balance each other out as... I said these teams are pretty similar. They have similar agendas and similar goals for this year in my mind. To improve off of last year, to have a winning record for Rutgers, maybe in my mind those goals should almost be more amplified because of what I perceive to be a much easier schedule, but we'll just have to see. I think in this game the critical matchup overall boils down to Rutgers rushing offense against Nebraska's total defense. Kyle Manungai, and then his blockers in Holden Pierce, Brian Felter, Gus Zelinskis, Kwambena Asamoa, Tyler Needham, the five offensive linemen, five starters, and you could even include Kenny Fletcher in there. He's been a pretty good tight end. Pit that group, the rushing offense, and then also the downfield blockers at receiver, and Kaliak Manis, who's shown that He has some legs, showed that off against Minnesota, has shown it a little bit um, here with Rutgers. Samuel Brown, the fifth, he had a big run against Washington. So that rushing offense, which right now is one of the more productive rushing offenses in all of college football, um, in total, they rush for about 207.3 yards per game on 43 attempts. They're averaging 4.8 yards per rush attempt, 43rd. However, I will say that their their opponents do stack the box, and they should. The rushing offense is much stronger than Kaliak Manis in the passing offense, but Kaliak Manis has been efficient and effective in passing the football. Right now, Rutgers is averaging more yards per pass attempt and more yards per completion than Nebraska is, by the way. A lot of that being based off of Rutgers' underrated wide receiver room and the play action that Rutgers is utilizing and the threat of their run game and an elite, and I mean elite, offensive line that Rutgers has. That unit going up against a Nebraska defense that I still think is good, maybe great. If everything gets together, they could be near elite. Jamari Butler, Nash Huttmacher, Ty Robinson, MJ Sherman, up in the front, and then Stephon Thompson, John Bullock at linebacker, and in the DB room, Tommy Hill, Deshaun Singleton, C.R. Wright, who's really stepped up, Marcus Buford, Malcolm Hartsog Jr., and Isaac Gifford. That is the matchup that I think will determine this game. Because if Rutgers can run the football and just move Nebraska's defensive front for the whole game, like Illinois did for the fourth quarter in overtime, And that's possible because Rutgers, in my view, has a much better rushing attack than Illinois and a much better offensive line. If they can do that, well, this game, I don't know if I'd say it's over because Rutgers does have some other things that Nebraska can exploit, but they can take the energy out of the crowd. They can wear down Nebraska's defense, dictate the pace of the game. And with some of the questions that Rutgers Um, Not only, I meant to say what Nebraska has, the questions that they have, I would say, on the offensive line with Mezcua just having some issues with the team, with Nebraska figuring out their offensive line due to the injuries, due to the reshuffling, and also the running back room. And again, Dylan Raiola, I think he's good, one of the best quarterbacks in the Big Ten, but he's still learning some things. You saw that in the Illinois game. 
And I think in big games throughout the season, this being one of them, there's a good chance that you'll see it again because he's facing athletes that he didn't face on an average basis in high school. So what Nebraska cannot do is let Rutgers dictate the pace of the game. If they do, well, they're, they would be a few things short of dead. Only reason I'm not saying dead is it's not like Rutgers has this high-flying offense or this invincible defense, but Rutgers would be favored to win if they control the pace of the game. If Nebraska controls the pace of the game, honestly, I'd I'd say it'd be close to similar except for the fact that Rutgers has been able to force turnovers. They've been able to get clutch stops. Their defense, I think, operates much better in the red zone than in between the 20s is what my intuition and watching games tells me. And I think that it's it's more important. It's a better indicator of who's going to win if Rutgers controls the pace of the game rather than Nebraska. I think Nebraska could control the pace of the game and still lose, given the nature of Rutgers' massive special teams advantage, which we will talk about later. The fact that I think Rutgers is better on the offensive line. Um, So when it comes time to panic and maybe you have to pass a little bit more, I don't know. I think that Nebraska is more talented in the passing offense, but offensive line and protection really does matter. And you look at total defense, Rutgers is allowing way more yards than Nebraska on fewer plays, on fewer plays, mind you. And you look at time of possession, and these defenses are not on the field all that much. But Rutgers is better in fourth down and third down conversion percentage. They just are. And overall, they right now are, I mean, they're just, they they find ways to win, Rutgers does. And for Nebraska, it's been history, almost tradition, that they find ways to lose. So, It's critical that Nebraska is able to dictate the pace of the game, force punts, limit Kyle Manungai, dare Kaliak Manis to beat him with his arm. That way they get more possessions, save more clock, have a longer game to where you think that with the better talent that that Nebraska has and the more diverse of a team they have in terms of they can run well, I think, if they have the right running back in Emmett Johnson, they can pass extraordinarily well. They can defend the pass. They can defend the run. Rutgers is kind of a one-trick pony on both sides of the ball, more so defense. It's not that extreme, but it's something that we'll talk about here after we break down this offense. I would give Rutgers running back and the offensive line easily, and I will explain to you why that is. You look you look at the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, and what they have done on the ground, and it's pretty impressive stuff. They have only allowed four sacks all year for Kaliak Manis. They have 951 rushing yards for 5.4 yards per carry, 11 touchdowns on 175 carries. Now remember, the statistics that I often give you outside of these, which I got this one from ESPN, come from teamrankings.com. So if there is some times a conflict it's because teamrankings.com doesn't count stats against fcs opponents which means the northern iowa game that doesn't count for nebraska and the howard game doesn't count for rutgers if they did in the teamrankings.com stats you would probably see a pretty stark difference in average time of possession with rutgers leading the huskers there as northern iowa was honestly northern iowa game-controlled Nebraska. They just lost by a ton because all they could do is chew clock and occasionally, you know, pick up short yards to convert long drives, but they didn't come up with anything. Basically, that's what Washington did to Rutgers, except Washington didn't have a 20-minute T.O.P. advantage. They only had like a 30-second T.O.P. advantage. Um, But Rutgers has a really good rushing offense compared to Nebraska's, which only averages 4.3 yards per carry. Nebraska has ran the ball only six fewer times for 723 yards, so over 200 fewer yards, nine rushing touchdowns to Rutgers 11, and Nebraska's 154 passing attempts, Rutgers only has 96, and yet 
Rutgers has two-thirds, again, of the passing attempts, but only a half of the sacks that Nebraska's given up. The offensive line, clearly better for Rutgers. Same with the running back room. I would give tight end to Nebraska. I like Thomas Fedoni and Nate Borkacher over Kenny Fletcher, just the added depth. Isaiah Nayer leads Nebraska in receiving yards with 291 for receiving touchdowns. Rutgers' leading receiver currently is Dimir Miller with 227 receiving yards and a receiving touchdown. Kenny Fletcher leads the team in receiving touchdowns with two. I think that both of these offenses are more balanced than at least Rutgers. Rutgers' offense is way more balanced than I thought it would be entering this season. Like They are capable of passing the football. They have a much better passing offense, for example, than Michigan or Iowa do. For Nebraska, there is about as balanced as I expected. I'm just a little bit confused with the whole running back situation. Like, Emmett Johnson doesn't play, and then he plays a lot. And then it's the, it's the same with Dante Dowdle or Gabe Irvin Jr. Like, I, I don't feel like the running back depth is being utilized to the degree that I thought it maybe would be. And I'm a little bit shocked when you look at Nebraska and the fact that well, they're they're passing, they're passing fifty fifty. Um, at one point, it felt like they were passing more than they were running by a fair amount. I don't know if that's a misconception that I have, but it felt like that at some point. But both of these offenses are capable. I wouldn't say they're bad at any position. Rutgers is a lead at O line. I'd say a lead at running back. At quarterback, they're just above average. Wide receiver, I'd say above average good. It's it's the same thing with tight end. Nebraska is great at quarterback, great at receiver, great at tight end. I would say great at running back and just above average, maybe good at best on the offensive line. Defensively, I would take Rutgers secondary over Nebraska's, but I would take the Cornhuskers defensive line and linebacker core by a mile Actually, let's just say five miles. No, more than that. Ten miles over Nebraska's or over Rutgers front. I'm so excited that I'm tripping over my words here. Bear with me. This is going to be a very exciting game. You look at the Rutgers Scarlet Knights rushing defense in all of its glory. It is a whopping 133rd in yards per carry allowed. Yikes. Had to had to lick my lips there and exhale really hard because 6. 6.7 yards per carry allowed by your opponents and you are 4 and 0 and you have game controlled all of your opponents like never trailing them, either tying them, leading them. They they should have blown out Virginia Tech. It's crazy. Thankfully, Thankfully, Rutgers did get one of their better linebackers back who was injured for a long time in Tyreem Powell, and I think he could help this defense that has struggled, and I mean struggled, in stopping the run, and that's not an understatement. They're allowing 182 rushing yards per game, which is 94th, 10 rushing first downs per game, which is 100th, off of 27 27 opponent rushing yards per game, or rushing attempts per game, which is fifth. Teams barely, and I mean barely, run on Rutgers. A part of it is because Rutgers does such a good job controlling the clock with their run game that opponents don't have that many plays per game. Rutgers does a good job of limiting their opponents' drives. But my goodness, If, let's say, Iowa or Michigan played Rutgers and they were able to force Rutgers to punt often enough, Rutgers is a team that, while wanting to game control their opponents, in having that weakness of a run defense that, once you get past their defensive line, they don't do a good job, I think, blocking, tackling, getting home at the second level at linebacker, past the D line, you can exploit them. And therefore, that means Rutgers, despite wanting to game control their opponents, can easily be game controlled if you are able to, if you're able to, if you're able to stop them offensively and if you have a solid rushing attack. So that's something to pay attention to. Rutgers on the season also has only four sacks through four games. The pass rush, once again, 
is problematic. It is. I mean, Aaron Lewis is by far their best player on the defensive line, or one of their best. One of their defensive tackles is also highly rated. I checked out pro football focus ratings. One out of two defensive ends, one out of two defensive tackles, one out of two linebackers is highly rated. The other one's rated pretty poorly. It seems like there's a lot of inconsistency in that front, part of it due to injuries. At DB, I don't think it's the same thing, though. They have three interceptions, including a pick six. Desmond Igbenosin, Eric Rogers, Robert Longerbeam, Shaquan Loyal, and others are doing pretty well. Rutgers has three forced fumbles and two fumble recoveries. You look for Nebraska and their defense. They have 16 sacks. 16 on the season. 15 passes defended, five interceptions, including two pick sixes. One by John Bullock, the other by Tommy Hill. They have three forced fumbles and three fumble recoveries. Nebraska's rushing defense is eighth in opponent rushing yards per game, and they are seventh in opponent yards per carry, only allowing 2.5. Now, again, it's not factoring in the Northern Iowa game, and they had one of the more successful rushing attacks against Nebraska, and... No one that Nebraska has played is even close to Rutgers' rushing offense. You also got to consider that Colorado, who seemingly figured out their run game against UCF, was not even close to figuring it out against Nebraska, where they just got absolutely steamrolled. So just a few things to consider, but even factoring in all of those different things, and also the fact that, look, Jonah Coleman and then Basil Tutin, who are the two main running backs that Rutgers played, the previous two games, they're some of the better running backs in the country. Even factoring that in, Rutgers has done a very poor job stopping the run. Nebraska, I think, has been good, great at it. Not to the same degree that I expected in in the preseason, but they're still doing a good job overall. And then you look at trench warfare and special teams. I think Nebraska has the way better D-line. Rutgers is the way better O-line. I'm ultimately going with Rutgers here for the reason that I think that their O-line is such a non-negotiable with what they do that they're tough. And while Nebraska's D-line could break, their O-line may break under pressure, Rutgers' D-line will break under pressure. I don't think this Rutgers O-line will break at all. They are stout, they are deep, and a large part of the reason why Manungai and Samuel Brown the fifth have had success they've had is not just because of their talent, but also because this offensive line is experienced and they're well coached. And I like what Kirk Sharaka is doing so far this year. So I give Rutgers the slight edge over Nebraska in the trenches, but it's not this massive edge either. These two teams are close there. Where they're not close, not one bit, is special teams. Jai Patel is 2 of 4 on field goals right now, 1 of 1 from 20 to 29, 1 of 2 from 30 to 39, 0 of 1 from 50 plus. 100% of his extra points. Jai Patel, last season, where he started, was 15 of 18 on field goals, 7 of 7 from the 20s, 3 of 4 from the 30s, 3 of 3 from the 40s, long of 51, 2 of 2 from 50 plus, and he was 33 of 34 in his extra points. He's a reliable kicker. Um, he missed a field goal, two of them against Virginia Tech, made one against Howard, also made one against Virginia Tech to finish out the game. So I don't know exactly what's going on there. I know that Rutgers has been a more effective team this season at scoring touchdowns, but it also seems like their special teams unit isn't elite, but it's better than Nebraska's. Nebraska is four of nine on field goal attempts this season, 20 of 20 from extra points, Four of nine from field goals with a long of 31. They're, they're, they're just not good. And as Corn Crazed and others have said, what Nebraska needs to do is go Dan Campbell. They need to be aggressive. They need to try opponents on fourth down. Alvano last year made one from 55, but he was 9 of 15 from field goals. You know he has the leg. It's just a question of accuracy and confidence. And he's been injured through multiple games right now, so I can't count on him returning and all of a sudden having a fantastic game here. Coaching-wise, I think that Rutgers is better offensively than Nebraska, and I think they're better coached in terms of strength and conditioning. I think Rutgers is a tougher 
team. Nebraska, I would take their defensive coordinator, Tony White, over Rutgers' Joe harris And head coach, I think, is a push. I think both of these coaches do a good job of establishing great culture, of coaching and developing their players, and also with scheming. So that's that. These te- these coaching staffs are pretty even, pretty level. And as I said earlier, they both have similar goals. I think this is going to be a very close game, a very entertaining game. Ultimately, though, I do have Rutgers winning here and covering that seven, six and a half point spread by a score of 24 to 21. You may ask why, and my answer to that would simply be, this is going to be a close game. And I think that special teams in the Big Ten in particular, they they help determine these close games. And Rutgers is a way better special teams unit. Rutgers has bigger non-negotiables than Nebraska does, mainly their rushing offense. And while Nebraska is the more balanced team, I watched that Illinois game where Illinois, they just had to stay in the game and they eventually wore down the trenches. Rutgers does not have the defensive line or linebacker core that Illinois does, at, at least from what I can tell. Their offensive line, though, is way better. And so far, Kaliak Manis has underrated efficiency. You look at his numbers this season, seven touchdowns, one pick, completing over 60% of his throws, averaging around eight yards per pass attempt. He's 34th in QBR. He has a passer rating of a 150. He's taken steps forward with the Scarlet Knights. And I think that a more balanced offense from Rutgers, underrated receivers like Dimir Miller, Christian Dremel, the rushing attack they have, that's going to be able to move Nebraska's defense somewhat dictate the terms of the game, the possessions, the plays. And I think Dylan Raiola will do well, but it wouldn't shock me at all if this Rutgers rushing defense performed at a better level than they have because they're getting players back from injury. And Nebraska against Purdue and the final quarter, half, and especially overtime of that Illinois game has looked suspect on the offensive line. So I'm picking Rutgers to win. I'm picking them to cover. There will be five reasons why videos for both of these teams, because I think both of them can win. If Rutgers ends up losing Nebraska, you know, taking, I would say their, their biggest win since the 2016 season home, that wouldn't, that wouldn't shock me at all because they have the talent to win. I think they have the coaching to win. I'm just not predicting it to happen. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment your thoughts down below. Thanks to Crash2488 and Brasco Rascal for being Heisman members of my Patreon page. Thanks to Chris Lane, Carlillo OH, Ismar, Tyler Nye, and Jilton Kush for being all American members. And then thanks to John Lynn, Roaming Gnome, Matthew Sale, Austin Christmas, and Janisha Cockrell for being all conference members. Have a great day, guys. Check out my merchandise store, Discord server, and Patreon page via the links in the description and down below in the pinned comment. Go Scarlet Knights! And go Big Red.